Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Death Race, released in the year 2008. The movie opens up with a short description of the sudden collapse of the U.S. economy after 2008. This collapse results in an increase in unemployment and crimes, because of which private businesses start controlling the majority of prisons across the country. One of such prisons is Terminal Island Prison, run by a female warden, Hennessy, who broadcasts Death Race to the rest of the world via a famous website on the internet. Death Race is a competition where the inmates race against each other and the winner gets various benefits, including their freedom. The next scene begins with a race nearing its finish between Machine Gun Joe and Frankenstein, who is joined by a female navigator. Frankenstein seems to have a problem with his car system as none of his weapons are working and also his defensive system crashes. Taking this opportunity, Joe starts wrecking Frank's car using various weapons. After sensing a brutal attack from Joe, Frankenstein suggests his navigator eject out from the car before it gets destroyed. As soon as the navigator ejects, Joe attacks Frankenstein's car with a missile, destroying it completely. In the next scene, we're introduced to the main character of the movie, Jensen Ames, a factory worker. After he, along with his co-workers, get frustrated by the low wages paid by the factory, they begin protesting. With just a little bit of protest, two truckloads of SWAT team arrive there and start beating the factory workers. Seeing his co-workers getting beaten for no reason, Ames gets enraged and begins attacking the police officers. Slowly, the riot calms down and all of the workers return home. At night, Ames reaches his home and is warmly welcomed by his wife, Susie. While the couple is about to get intimate, their little baby daughter starts crying and Ames goes to see her. After that, he enters the bathroom to take a shower and Susie starts preparing dinner. Unbeknownst to Ames, a masked man invades the house and attacks Susie. Soon, he returns to the kitchen and finds his wife lying unconscious on the floor. Scared, he tries to wake her up, but just then, the masked man sprays something in his face, blinding him temporarily. Before leaving, the masked man gives Ames a wicked stare and makes a gunshot gesture with his gloved hand. Shortly after, Ames comes back to his senses and is shocked to find his wife dead, a knife in his hand, and himself being arrested by police officers for suspected murder. The scene then fast forwards six months and Ames is being taken to the Terminal Island prison. There, he's confronted by a harsh prison guard, Ulrich, who sprays him with freezing water and escorts him to his prison cell. As soon as the guards leave, other prisoners inside Ames' prison attack him, but he overpowers them and becomes the last man standing. The next day, the inmates continue to bully Ames and one of the inmates even spits on his food plate. At the same time, another prisoner, Pachenko, enters the cafeteria and makes fun of Ames, calling him a wife killer. Enraged, Ames attacks the thug, but they're soon separated by the guards. After the fight, Ames is brought to Hennessy, who takes a closer look at his record file and finds out that he's good at driving race cars. She then offers him an opportunity to take part in the death race, where he should drive a car disguised as the late Frankenstein wearing a mask. If he wins the race, he will get freedom. Hennessy also mentions that Frankenstein is very popular among the viewers and has already won four death race competitions. Despite this, Ames refuses to take part in the race. Enraged, Hennessy threatens to lock him up in solitary confinement if he doesn't comply. Left with no other options, Ames reluctantly agrees. In the next scene, Hennessy takes Ames to meet with the coach, who will be guiding him throughout the race. Here, Ames also meets with Gunner and Lists, the other two members of his team, who aid in customizing the race vehicle with advanced weapons and protection gears. Soon, Coach takes Ames for a visit to his race car and tells him everything about the modifications made. He also informs him that the offensive and defensive gadgets of the car only activate after they pass some levels in the game. Following this, he requests Ames to not try for a prison break as the prison is under CCTV surveillance and also the escape path is a narrow bridge which is heavily guarded. The team continues their discussion about the race in the backyard where the coach tells Ames that the race is divided into three stages, where the driver must survive through stages one and two in order to take part in stage three. After the completion of all three stages, the winner gets his freedom. The next day, before the race, Ames is brought to Hennessy's office and is given the face mask of Frankenstein. When Ames wears the mask and walks out for the race, everyone believes that Frankenstein is alive and cheers for him. 
Just before the start of stage one of the race, Ames is introduced to his navigator, Elizabeth Case, who is also Frankenstein's previous navigator. Soon, the race begins and Case assists Ames in adjusting to the car. During the race, drivers must drive their cars over symbols to activate the offensive and defensive functions in their vehicles. Other racers are able to access the features, but despite driving his car over the symbols, Ames is unable to use them effectively. The other drivers soon start shooting at each other, as killing other participants is allowed in the game. The race is also broadcasted worldwide, with millions of people watching it live. Just then, Ames is taken aback to notice Pachenko, the other driver, making the same hand gesture as the masked man who killed his wife. After taking a severe blow from Machine Gun Joe, Ames finishes stage one in the last position, while three other drivers are eliminated. In the next scene, Ames realizes that he's just being used by Hennessy for her personal gain. He then confronts her about Pachenko and refuses to take part in stage two, but the latter responds by showing him images of his daughter living with foster parents. She then asks him if he ever wants to be with his daughter again. Enraged, Ames snatches one of the photographs and walks away. At night, Ames follows Pachenko to his team's garage and confronts him about his wife's murder. Unfortunately, other members of Pachenko's team capture him and he gets beaten down. Soon, Liss arrive there and stabs Pachenko with a pen, distracting him and allowing Ames to retaliate and almost murder Pachenko. However, the prison guards intervene in the fight and suggest the drivers store their anger for Stage 2. The next day, as soon as Stage 2 of the race begins, Ames starts questioning Case if she was involved in Frankenstein's death. At first, Case refuses to admit anything. But when Ames threatens to break the car and cause an accident, she reveals that she was told to ruin Frankenstein's defense weaponry so that he wouldn't win the race. In return, Hennessy promised to give her freedom. Hearing this, Ames understands that no matter how good he performs, he will never be allowed to escape the place. After that, he increases his car speed and catches up with other racers. He follows Pachenko and takes the weapon option, overtaking him. With a great presence of mind, Ames opens fire at Pachenko and releases smoke in front of his car, blocking his vision and making him collide with a concrete post. Ames then stops his car, approaches the injured Pachenko, and snaps his neck in the middle of the track. As Ames has broken the rule of the death race by stopping his car and stepping out of it, Hennessy gets enraged and orders her men to take out the Dreadnought, her secret weapon truck. The Dreadnought's appearance alarms the other racers as they're attacked by bullets, fire, and missiles one by one until their car explodes. The Dreadnought not only fires bullets and missiles, but also releases whirling drills that puncture the cabins of the racers it approaches. Soon, most of the racers are eliminated, leaving only Frankenstein and Joe in the race. Seeing the monster tank wreak havoc, Ames contacts Joe during the race and suggests they work as a team, to which Joe agrees. Together, they distract the Dreadnought and make it follow them to the place where the dangerous weapon is activated. This causes the pointed metal bars to emerge from the track, causing the Dreadnought to collapse between the metal bars and explode. With the Dreadnought destroyed completely, the second stage of the race is also completed. Witnessing Ames perform so well in the race and out of fear that he's well aware of her plans, Hennessy instructs Ulrich to plant a bomb beneath Ames' car and kill him during the final race. The next day, Ulrich follows Hennessy's command and plants a bomb under Ames's car, while Hennessy distracts the prisoners with a sudden speech. Ames, on the other hand, comes up with his own strategy after watching a video of a smashed billboard from the previous race and tells Joe that they need to have a chat. The final stage of the race begins with Joe and Ames making some modifications in their cars. Ames has added an extra half gallon of fuel to his car, while Joe has installed some deadly missiles on the top of his car. Case then reveals to Ames that Hennessy visited her and asked her to make him lose the race, and also mentions that she has already got her release papers. However, she assures him that she's no longer going to follow Hennessy's directions. Unfortunately, during the race, Hennessy rigs the features of the track against Ames, giving Joe an upper hand to defeat him. At the beginning of the second lap of the race, Hennessy activates the missile feature for Joe. Surprisingly, rather than firing at Ames, Joe fires towards the billboard, which is covering the escape route from the prison. The missiles destroy the billboard, allowing Joe and Ames to drive past it. Seeing them escape, 
Hennessy immediately stops the live broadcast and orders her officers to follow the racers and arrest them. She also tries to activate the bomb planted under Ames's car, but it shows no effect. Turns out that the coach and other team members had already taken it out before the race started. Elsewhere, with helicopters and police cars following the escaped duo, Ames releases the extra half gallon of fuel and causes a great explosion in the middle of the road, restricting the police officers from following them. Furthermore, the duo decides to separate, making the helicopters follow only Ames, as he is driving as Frankenstein and is their most important asset. Following this, the group initiates the third plan, which involves Case. She mentions that she's ready, and he has already got her release papers. With this, Ames exchanges seats with Case and jumps out from the car. Case takes on the wheels and drives for some distance until the helicopters launch a wall of fire in front of her. At last, Case steps out of the car, surrendering herself to the police, wearing Frankenstein's mask. Later, Ulrich visits Hennessy's office with a gift and some congratulatory cards for the successful capture of Frankenstein. Unfortunately, when she opens the gift box, she is surprised to see the same bomb that she planted under Frankenstein's car. With no time to respond, the bomb detonates, killing them on the spot. Elsewhere, the coach can be seen having pressed the detonator. Six months later, Joe and Ames have opened up a garage somewhere in Mexico and are living a good life. Ames has regained custody of his daughter, too. Just then, they get a surprise visit from Case, who congratulates them on their new life. Ames concludes the film by saying that, while he knows he isn't the best dad in the world, no one can love their child more than he does. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.